countries. And we always uh, encourage our people to tap into indigenous knowledge and strengthen that from within because the competition is high, but when you strat strategize your brand and you strategize how you sell your brand to various um, entities outside, you can really compete. And of course, the financial aspect <laughs> as well, when you get uh, great backing. So, yeah. Thank you very much. And then President Ekra, final words. Uh, no, thank you. I, I think if there is a, a message I want to uh, send across, is uh, the fact that what we are embarking on right now with the Inter-African Trade Fair is a journey. We, it, we, we, we are very, very conscious that it will need uh, several of uh, these type of events for Africa to now uh, start trading more with itself and also for Africa to uh, feel confident that they can compete with the rest of the world. Uh, it's, it's, it's not just a one-off event. Uh, we are going to continue those efforts so that North Africa knows what East and West and Southern Africa have to offer and vice versa. Uh, it will take time because historically the, the, the trade has been vertical from Africa to Europe, from uh, the English-speaking countries to London, from the French-speaking country to Paris and so on. And it has gradually changed with the Chinese coming, which are now also a, a, a strong trading partner of our continent. So the missing link is from the African to trade with themselves. And the more we will have those kind of events, the more they will feel confident that another African country can be a strong risk to deal with. Thank you. Thank you very much, President. Um, so what we've heard today is uh, the important uh, impact delivered by the last uh, Inter-African Trade Fair. And it shows what can be done you know, when you have the right commitments and you have the right uh, tools in, in hand. <coughs> We are here today for the 2021 uh, trade fair, and uh, again, it's, it's looking like we're going to have similar impact. We've seen a number of deals signed here. So um, all I can do at this point is to thank the panelists for very strong contributions and to uh, thank you all for your attention. I'll hand it back to uh, Mark now at this point. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. They deserve a round of applause, don't they? <laughs> thank you, uh, Obi, for that uh, very interesting uh, um, session. It's very important, I think, at the heart of IATF is the deals. Not the discussion necessarily, that's important in the networking, but the deals are primary. And it just so happens we have three, uh, in fact, no, four signings of deals. Uh, one of them is actually for over one billion US dollars. So don't move because I'm going to invite um, the signatories for those four separate deals to come up in turn to sign those deals with a Frexim bank. Um, now, the first deal uh, is a uh, letter of interest to Blue Horn Aviation and Logistics. A letter of interest uh, uh, to Blue Horn Aviation and Logistics. Uh, and for that uh, deal, which is valued at $250 million, I'm going to call on uh, Asia Mina, who is the CEO of Blue Horn Aviation and Logistics, to sign on behalf of Blue Horn, uh, and Rene Awambeng, uh, who is the global head client relations of a Frexim Bank, to sign for a Frexim Bank. So if I could have both of them up here, please. And here comes John, our lawyer, with the, uh, with the, the letters and, uh, did you remember your pen, John? John, you remembered your pen, right? Joseph, I'm sorry, Joseph, you remembered his, his, remember his pen. So this is, let me tell you a little bit about this deal as, as the signatories um, come on, on to the uh, stage. Uh, now, Frexin Bank has been very active as the lead uh, or participating bank in the past decade in financing 
infrastructure projects uh, across Africa. And in this capacity, a Frexin Bank will be issuing a non-binding letter of interest to Blue Horn Aviation and Logistics Limited to provide debt financing in support of their bid for the management of three domestic Nigerian airports. The value, 250 million US dollars. This opportunity supports the bank's pillars of industrialization through the provision of trade enabling infrastructure. So we are now witnessing this 250 million dollar letter of interest to Blue Horn Aviation and Logistics signed by them and signed by Afrexim Bank today, the 16th November, 2021. Congratulations to both parties. Now we'll move on to another deal, even bigger, 274 million US dollars, a signing of up to 274 million dollars, uh, senior secured reserve-based lending facility uh, for something very excitingly called Project Mars. Project Mars. This is between Mars Exploration and Production Company Limited and a Frexin Bank. So I'm going to call on the uh, two signatories from both parties to join us. Uh, signing for Mars is Abdullahi Bashir. Uh, Abdullahi is the chairman of Mars ENP. So if I could have uh, Mr. Bashir up to the stage, please, to be the signatory on behalf of Mars E and P, and signing for a Frexim Bank, Amir Kamir, who is the executive of VP uh, for a Frexim Bank, is signing on behalf of Frexim Bank. So those are the two parties I'd like to see in these chairs, please, if they are here, if they could come and join us to sign for, ah, there's Amir. Um, and then do we have Abdullahi Bashir here with us from Mars Exploration uh, and uh, Production? Mr. Bashir, are you here? Let me tell you a little bit about this deal as we're waiting for the two signatories to come on. Uh, this is a US dollar, $274 million senior secured reserve based lending facility for something called Project Mars. Now, Frexing Bank's been very active as a lead or at least a participating bank in, in, in some instances in the past deca decade or so in financing the growth of indigenous oil and gas companies across the continent. A Frexing Bank has, I think in the last five years, supported oil and gas transactions to the tune of $10 billion. Uh, a Frexing Bank is partnering with uh, Shell Trading uh, to support Mars ENP to raise a debt finance of 200 and $74 million, and Mars will use the proceeds of the financing to, one, finance the payment of Mars's 51% share of the total project cost. That's the consulting of signature bonus, severance pay, and capex settlements to ADAX, uh, the former holders of OMLs uh, 123, 124, 126, and 137 to the federal government of Nigeria. They're also going to use the proceeds Okay, I understand. I understand Mr. Bashir is having some uh, logistics issues getting into the building. So what we'll do is quickly move on to the next, and I'll come back to that particular one, no problem. Um, we'll go on to NNPC now, uh, the Nigerian National Petroleum uh, Company, NNPC. This is an exciting one. Uh, this one is called Project Bison, Project Bison. And it's a, a five-year project export finance facility to fund corporate purposes to be repaid from proceeds of crude oil uh, lifting allocation. Guess how much this one is? One, uh, one over one billion U.S. dollars. One point zero four billion U.S. billion dollars. 
uh, quite a, a big transaction. Uh, and to sign this transaction um, is, I will call again, uh, uh, Amrik Kamir. No? Uh, who is going to uh, sign this one? Is it you or for a fraction bank? Yes, if, if I could first uh, call uh, uh, Umar uh, Ad Ajia. Umar Ajia is the executive director and group CFO for NNPC. If you're here, this is a huge deal. I think a round of applause is in order. This is, this is over a $1 billion deal. So Amre Kamir is also going to sign for Afrexim Bank. Amre is the executive VP for Afrexim Bank. Uh, you'll see him in a moment also uh, signing uh, the Mars deal. Uh, once we can get Mr. Abdullahi Bashir back into the uh, now, as the two uh, signatories take their seats and grab their pens to sign this transaction, I want to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, so the transaction relates to the pre-export shipment finance facility of up to $1.04 billion, underpinned by a forward sale agreement and offtake contracts from the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, commonly called NNPC, acting as the borrower and seller. As part of the transaction, NNPC will enter into an FSA pursuant to which it shall deliver crude oil from the end of the grace period's 21st month of 35,000 barrels per day, which shall be sold under prearranged offtake contracts. Now, the receivables under the offtake contracts will support an aggregate amount of debt of up to $1.04 billion. The proceeds of the facility will boost the tax revenues and foreign currency receipts and thousands of jobs in oil and gas refining value chain by more than $2.4 billion uh, to the immediate benefit of the federal government and will improve the balance of trade and gross domestic product of Nigeria. Now, this transaction complies with the bank's mandate to promote promote local content in Africa's oil and gas and other mining industries and generate foreign receivables into Africa. This is a big deal. Gentlemen, please go ahead and sign. Could I call on uh, um, President Benedict Orama, Professor Benedict Orama? I think this is one that calls uh, for President Orama to come and take a photograph uh, with the signatories. If you are here in the building, Prof. There he is. The man at the head of Afrexim Bank. I think this is a very important deal for Afrexim and certainly for NNPC and shows the commitment uh, of Afrexim Bank to support uh, uh, the sustainable development of Africa and the creation of thousands of jobs, much needed jobs across the value chain. In a, deal, in a deal this big, there are a lot of pages, right? I was just thinking about how many times. I hope you have enough ink in your pen to complete this assignment. I'm, I'm going to call on... Uh, I'm going to call on President, um, pr President Orama, could I um, c uh, bring you to my mic here just to say a few words? Thank you very much, Mark. Let me um, say congratulations to both NMPC team and the Frexen Bank team for putting this landmark deal together. I think you tried to describe what, it try, uh, what it's aimed at achieving, but it goes beyond that. But first, uh, for our present bank team, I would like to thank 
uh, origination team, uh, syndication team, uh, legal team, and even uh, advisory and capital markets team for a very innovative deal. And also NMPC with a long experience in this kind of transaction, they also had to bring some innovation in the uh, transaction we, they, we just entered into with them. Some of you in the audience will say, oh, why are they financing fossil fuel? Uh, I say, we are not ashamed of financing fossil fuel. The problem we have on the continent and the discussions going on around the world um, amplified at COP26 a few days ago was the issue of how to strike a balance. The way we see it at the bank is that Africa contributes less than 4% of greenhouse gases. So what it means is that Africa can disappear from the surface of the earth today and the problem will persist. So we are not the cause of the problem of greenhouse gases. We are the victims. And we have a few countries in Africa that depend today for livelihood, for survival on fossil fuels. A country like Nigeria, like Angola, even Egypt, Republic of Congo, Equatorial Guinea, South Sudan, I can continue to read them out. That is the only way they can survive today. So as we make this, we do this debate, we will know, we have to know the trade-off between stopping development today to achieve a clean environment for everybody and what that means for the continent and even the longer term for our people. We think that the benefit of what we are being asked to do right now will, benefit, will go around the world, but the cost is local. So as we do the debate, we must find ways for people to buy down the cost for us. The kind of deal we are doing today <clears throat> is what we call a balanced approach to the problem. We equip our countries to, to have the capacity to begin to transition to clean energy. We equip our countries to manage the potential political problems of an abrupt change that will be counterproductive and not allow us to achieve the the clean environment we all need. And as I said, as victims of this, we need to be able to support our countries with the resources they have to cope with the damage inflicted, not by us, but by others. So you understand why we are signing a deal of this size in the oil and gas sector. So you also understand, I believe, the position of not only us, I believe the continent uh, ha shares that position. It's not that we do not want to finance uh, green uh, development. We want to, and we actually have a very strong program for that. But at the same time, sustainability means that our people must be alive today to enjoy the clean environment we are all aspiring to. The balance is what we are asking for. And what we are doing today will help Nigeria to pursue green development using its own resources while making sure that its people also achieve other aspects 
of the green, the, the sustainable development goals and the agenda 2063, the Africa we want. Thank you very much. Thank you very, uh, very much, President. Um, as I heard said recently, when uh, there was talk of uh, zero emissions, reaching zero emissions, someone said Africa is already at zero emissions. Uh, at the end of the day, this is a very important deal about a balanced approach and about sustainable development, poverty alle alleviation, job creation, and all those things keeping Africa on track. So it's a wonderful deal. Congratulations to both parties. Um, I don't know if you've got a handheld mic here. I thought they've disappeared from my table. I would love them to reappear because uh, they would be quite useful right now. Where is uh, my mic, uh, my technical guys? Are they going to come and salvage me? No? Okay. So, um, if I may, if yes, bring the microphone, if I may. Um, I, I, I thought it would be remiss not to ask, um, not to ask uh, um, a, a question uh, uh, of our, our, our brother from NNPC, uh, Umer Ajia. You're here, and uh, I have a microphone, and I think we, we need to hear a few words about the significance of the deal for NNPC's perspective. So I think maybe we can do this. It should be on. Is it on? Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, uh, a very good year. Afternoon, uh, Mr. President, uh, senior executives of uh, Afrexim Bank, uh, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, indeed, uh, first of all, uh, goodwill messages from the good people of uh, uh, Nigeria and NMPC in particular, and our group managing director. Uh, indeed, uh, we have come to be associated with a bank uh, of quality, and a bank of good people. Definitely, the fortunes of Africa is in the hands of Africans. Uh, this deal to us signifies a very important transaction that can happen within the African continent. We have pursued this vigorously within the shortest possible time, and today it has been accomplished. Afrexim has lived up to the expectations and aspirations of its founding fathers. It has supported the development of infrastructure in Africa and Nigeria in particular. And not only in infrastructure, but also in value addition, which this particular transaction stands for. Value addition to our output in oil and gas entails jobs creation, value maximization, and above all, prosperity. Prosperity for all. Prosperity in Nigeria implies prosperity in Africa. Where there's prosperity in Nigeria, there will be security. And where there's security in Nigeria, there will be security in Africa. No country in Africa can contain any insecurity challenge that befalls Nigeria. So it is in the interest of the global market, not only Africa, that there will be prosperity and security in Nigeria. For supporting us, Mr. President, and your team to accomplish this deal, you have made us proud that jobs will be created and value will be created in Nigeria and by extension in Africa. We thank you, your team, the external legal counsel, and our team who also worked day and night to accomplish this transaction. We thank you and God bless Afrexim, God bless NMPC, God bless Nigeria, and God bless the continent of Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll now uh, move back to uh, the third um, 
what was going to be the third deal that we were um, to have signed, or rather the second, should I say. Um, I want to know if um, we now have Mr. Abdullahi Bashir in the room. Do we have Mr. Abdullahi Bashir from Mars, ENP? Is he in the room? If he could join us, please, um, for the signing uh, of the seven, $274 million senior secured reserve-based lending facility for something called Project Mars. Uh, Amre, uh, our executive vice president, is not going. Yes, very well, thank you. I would have had to drag you back onto the stage, so thank you for staying. Uh, we'll just wait for uh, Mr. Abdullahi Bashir uh, to join us, and then we're going to sign that deal. I don't think I have to uh, explain what it is, because I think I've been through the, the, the uh, modalities of the deal already. Here you are. We're glad you got into the building. Uh, welcome. We've been uh, looking forward to meeting you. Congratulations on this important day. Um, we now have uh, the papers and the pens at the ready, so please take a seat. Affection Bank has been very active uh, as a lead uh, or participating bank in the growth of in, uh, indigenous uh, or oil and gas companies in Africa. And our Frexin Bank has, over the last five years, as I said, supported oil and gas transactions in the tune of $10 billion. And now it's partnering with Shell Trading to support Mars E and P exploration and production to raise a debt finance of $274 million US dollars. Do we have all the papers ready here? Oh, we're still waiting for some papers. Now, Mars will use the proceeds of financing to finance the payment of Mars's 51% share of the total project cost. That's consisting of signature bonus, severance pay, and CAPEX settlements to ADAX. They are the former holders of, of the OMLs. And these are the OMLs, 123, uh, the 02, 124, 126, and 137 to the federal government of Nigeria. They'll also use the proceeds to fund the fees, costs, and expenses related to the acquisition, uh, including any monies due to the federal government of Nigeria. Uh, and lastly, the proceeds will largely be used to finance the non-rig intervention program on the acquired assets. Uh, covers the transaction fees, costs, and expenses. So this is a senior secured reserve-based lending facility, Project Mars, $274 million. Gentlemen, if you are ready, uh, you can go ahead and sign. Project Mars. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you and congratulations. A important day for both parties. Lastly, we have one last deal for you. Uh, and this one uh, is also a very important one. Uh, this one is uh, an MOU uh, with the Smart Africa Secretariat. And for that, I'm going to call uh, Mr. Lassina Kone, uh, the Director General of Smart Africa, to join as a, as a signatory. And also uh, President Orama, Professor Benedict Orama, President Orama, President of Afrexim Bank, if I could grab someone could grab his attention if he could also come up as a signatory that's wonderful so I have my two signatories now for this uh, 
for this very important uh, uh, final um, signing uh, for this session. We'll just wait for President to take some uh, family photos and then if he could come and uh, do the honors of signing for this final, this final deal. So this is a memorandum of uh, understanding between a Frexin Bank and Smart Africa. Uh, and the objective of this MOU is to create a framework for collaboration between a Frexin Bank and Smart Africa Alliance. What is it going to do? Well, it's going to ensure the success of digitalization of the African economies and to create a single digital market in Africa through the promotion of the bank's ATG projects. And notable among the areas to be tackled are interoperable digital identity, cross-border digital payments, very important, that's to foster trade and transform Africa, uh, to showcase all the achievements of the above. Very important MOU between Afrexin Bank and Smart Africa. Gentlemen, pens at the ready, go ahead and sign. The documents have been exchanged, they've been signed. Congratulations, gentlemen. Now that concludes the four deals that we're signing in this, but there are many more deals to come over the next few days. We will now continue the regular program. We have a session optimizing the gains of the AFCFTA in the context of the fourth industrial revolution. Um, this is a CNN Evolve uh, event and the event will showcase 10 of Africa's strongest B2B technology companies and the intention is to drive high-level participation for these companies that then will, that will then feature in a media campaign uh, featuring on CNN properties and across social media now it's going to take a little bit of time for us to just organize the stage I'm going to ask uh, my colleagues to remove this desk and remove these chairs uh, and then I'm going to call on the moderator for this session who is none other than David Pilling he is the African editor for Financial Times. David, are you in here in the room? If you're here, make yourself known. Uh, is David here for this session? David, there he is. I see you, David. Hello. Welcome. Uh, and uh, I'll allow David to tell you a little bit more about the session and also who his panelists are. Uh, but do bear with us as we do some shuffling here. I might have to carry this desk myself at this stage. I think I'll take a chair for you. I'll take a chair away. How's that? Okay. Okay, shall I start here? Thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, everybody. Um, I know that uh, you know, um, this conference has um, been a logistical um, ch challenge, so it's amazing that everybody has made it through and is here. Um, it's also been a challenge for me, so just, uh, if you'll just let me get my bearings. So we're here to talk about the, uh, the continental free trade area and the fourth um, industrial revolution, as it's sometimes called. Um, I'm going to uh, um, you know, ask our panelists to be quite specific about what those two things um, mean and, um, uh, and how they um, interrelate. Because I know that at conferences like this, there can be a lot of people sort of do an awful lot of talking. Um, I'm a journalist, I'm the Africa editor of the Financial Times, and I'm very interested in how these things, you know, what we're talking about practically, what they really mean for real people, for real businesses, um, for um, policy um, uh, decisions. So, you know, I am going to ask some of our panelists whether the fourth industrial revolution 
is real? Is it just a buzzword? What does it mean? Um, uh, should we be thinking about this already? What about the first industrial revolution? Obviously in South Africa, the first industrial revolution is, you know, um, is long in a sense completed, but there are countries on this continent, you know, where, where, it, where it hasn't um, uh, really, where people still lack, say, electricity, uh, where manufacturing has gone uh, backwards. These are things that we associate with the, with the first industrial revolution. So, so you know, are we, are we kind of jumping the gun? What, 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 what is it that we should be um, talking about and thinking about as businesses, as policy makers, um, and, as, and as people, you know, who live and work on the, um, uh, on the continent? So, th so these are the kinds of things that I'll um, um, be um, pressing our panelists on. Um, we're extremely lucky um, that uh, we have joining us. I think he's coming out of a meeting, so he may be a little bit late, but we have the Right Honorable Ibrahim Patel, um, the, Ministry, uh, of, the Minister of Trade and Industry uh, and Competition um, for South Africa. Uh, we have Shamira Ahmed, who is a trade specialist and a senior economist at Research ICT Africa. Um, we have uh, Dr. Ainoje Irune, who's the Chief Operating Officer of Oando Energy Resources, which is in a sense very much a first industrial revolution company, an oil producer in Nigeria, but he's also somebody who can talk very compellingly uh, about the issues we're going to discuss. We have Dr. Ippolit Fofak, who's the Chief Economist of uh, Afrexin Bank, um, and we have Osama Fami, who's the CEO of Jitzone International, um, which is a, a, an online sort of, well, he'll tell you exactly what it is, but it's a kind of a, a B2B matchmaker between businesses um, and investors. So if I could invite my panelists up to the stage and uh, we'll get going. Thank you very much. Is there a seat for the minister? The minister is meant to be sitting here, so I guess I'll sit over here. Ah, if you all move one down, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Let me start with uh, Dr. Fofak, Afrex and Bank. Um, so we're talking about two things here. We're talking about the African free trade area, which has gone into effect this year. And we're also talking about the fourth industrial revolution. So a simple question to start with. How do those two things relate? Of course they are related. Of course they are related for um, a number of reasons. But before we get to why they're related, let me um, take a step back on the AFCFT itself. Yes. And it's fair to say that um, Africa Simbang has invested a lot in African Consent of Free Trade Agreement. We believe that it is a game changer in the sense that it has a potential to not only shift the composition of FDI, but also significantly increase it, moving the continent away from the debilitating correlation between growth and commodity cycle and in the process, boost both extra and intra African trade. I think at Afrexim Bank, the research we've done show, clearly shows that within the, ten, the first 10 years of AFT implementations, the AFC FTA could boost intra African trade by more than 20%, which is significant. The AFC FTA is also significant in the sense that we see it as really an inclusive growth trade reform. When you look at the potential gain in terms of uh, wages, and there will be a significant increase for both skilled and unskilled labor, with unskilled labor wages increasing much rapidly than the skilled wage labor. So we also see the potential for essentially inclusive growth instead of in the sense of lifting the poorest above the average. But at Afrexima, we are also cognizant of the fact that although it is a significant consent trade reform, significant potential for both trade 
economic transformation, both at structural and sectoral level, it is necessary, but not a sufficient condition. And then the sufficiency is where we see the correlation between AFCFT and the fourth industrial revolution. I think last month, we organized within the context of the fifth Babakandia lecture, um, our annual flagship event, looking at the implications of the importance of science, technology, and innovations for economic transformations in the AFCFT era. The conclusion was clear that unless Africa closes its technological gap, it will be difficult to realize the full potential of the AFCFT. Therefore, it is extremely important that we actually close the technological gap that we have if we are to move toward the realms of income convergence in the rest of the world. And this is where the fourth industrial revolution comes into play, which is essentially a confluence, in other words, I see as an extension of the third industrial revolution, which is essentially IT based. But the fourth one, it's more specific, it is more than applications of IT, it brings in a very strong data component. There are some key aspects. If you look at, for instance, the artificial intelligence AI, the Internet of Things, the robotics, if you look at the quantum, the quantum, um, the quantum, the print, the quantum technology, and if you look at the issue of the genetics engineering or the robotics, all those are applications of IT at a different level. But the benefit of these tools, which I call productivity enhancing tool, is that they will help Africa actually address its, its productivity and competitiveness gap. So those are the key fundamental. If we are to apply the four industrial revolutions, they could help address some of the key constraints that we see in the AFCFTA space, essentially the productivity side, the competitiveness, and mind you, the world has actually moved away from the 70s, where growth was largely driven by organizational changes toward a new stream where it's driven more by technological changes. And in those sphere, we see trade increasingly driven by manufactured goods with increasing technological content, which today accounts for more than 80% of global trade. In other words, we need that fourth industrial revolution to realize the potential of the AFCFT. Beyond that, to ensure that Africa is definitely on the path of global income convergence. Okay, thank, thank you very much. I'm delighted to say that the minister has now joined us. Thank you, thank you so much for making it. I know it's been logistically a, <laughs> a, difficult, um, a difficult time, so thank you so much. Um, I was saying before you arrived that I wanted really to start really at the basics and to, uh, to sort of unpick. We're meant to, in this panel, be looking at the continental free trade area as it relates to the fourth industrial revolution. But as a journalist, I'm very interested in actually getting to basics. What do we mean by those terms? How are they related? Um, so I'd like to, in a sense, to throw the same question um, at you. But maybe I could just start with, you know, we, we, the, the African continental free trade area got going this year. It was obviously not a uh, last year, sorry, it's not, it's, not a, um, uh, it's not been an ideal period in which to launch um, a continental free trade area given the restrictions that, that COVID um, uh, has, uh, has presented. But what, if any, practical